Calgary Flames fans, it's time for Flames Unfiltered. Entertaining and controversial hockey talk with your host, Brad Baru. Bye-bye, Big Save Dave. Say it ain't so. Sam Bennett headed to the Sunshine State. Good evening and welcome to another episode of Flames Unfiltered, April 12th, 2021, NHL Trade Deadline. It's time for episode number 95. I am the host of the show, Brad Brood. Good to have you here on the yeah, the night of NHL Trade Deadline as the day, deadline has come and gone. And a couple moves in Calgary. Yeah, not too bad of a day. We'll get into that a little bit later in the show. Important week for the Flames. See where uh, they go with the guys they have for the final 15 games of the season. This COVID has got the schedule all jacked on, whacked all around. Masters week was last week. I am uh, a big golf guy. And, you know, is this not, has Masters not become the most important sports day week? of the year minus maybe the Super Bowl would probably be something that people would argue with me of. Um, I don't know. I, I really look forward to that week. That golf course is so beautiful. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun watching that. It was uh, interesting how it rolled this week with a lot of the favorites uh, bowing out at the cut. And uh, it was interesting. And until trade deadline, I can't call it a flop. I predicted it to be a flop. There was a couple moves that uh, I thought the Felino deal was big. I thought the Mantha deal was big. Um, yeah, it was a little bit uh, surprising. Um, Flames made, I don't want to call it a splash, but I guess we're a factor, I guess, would be a better way of putting it. Um, how many of you Flames fans need counseling? My attitude's been junk lately. My excitement level for games is, uh, it's, I'm not going to lie, its it's been an all-time low. Um, I'm usually cocked and loaded, ready to roll, excited all week to do these shows. And, and lately, it's just been like, what do I talk about? I can't come on this show and tell you who sucks for an hour. Uh, I can't come on this show and tell you how to fix it, because it would take a hell of a lot more than an hour. Um I don't know. It, it, it's expectations versus reality. And I guess my expectations were, were through the roof this year, um, to say the least. They were through the roof. Uh, I predicted the Flames to take second in the North. And, yeah, um, I did. I had, I had high expectations. And maybe that's uh, <laughs> my own sense of reality. I think, you know, I don't think I'm different than a lot of other Flames fans in that fact that um, – we believed big, and we had the right to believe big. With a new primetime all-star goaltender in, in net and uh, a big defenseman on the back end new, and um, we had a lot to be be excited for in Calgary. And my letdown factor is um, I had an all-time high, and I've been a Flames fan since 84. So um, I don't know. It, it, it's It's not good right now. I'm waiting for that point to kick in, and hopefully it does this summer, to where I'm pumped and excited about what's to come and where the rebuild goes and uh, what all falls into to, to making this team good again. And I think it'll be a little bit more exciting. But watching these games where there's just meaningless, no hope for the playoffs, and honestly, no hope for some of the players to be on this team next year has got me just kind of blah and not excited. I am usually pregame show, postgame show, call in show. And now I don't listen to the pregame. <laughs> Fighting through the games half the time with my notes and getting my thoughts together. And I, and by the time I'm the game's done, I'm done. I can't. Uh, I can't rehash it for an hour on the post game show. I don't know. 
maybe deadline day and getting that over with will put a spark in the air. Um, I can't wait. I don't know. I can't wait for next year. I cannot wait to play a normal 2021 to NHL season. I want to start normal in October. I want to end normal in April. If I'll note that I actually like 82 games. And actually, believe it or not, if I'll note that I want to play teams outside Canada. I didn't think I'd say that. I loved the thought of the North Division. And I don't necessarily hate the thought of the North Division. Um, I wouldn't mind it staying if they played outside the division, which I think would, would make will obviously happen, but um, will make a big difference in the excitement level. Um, it was okay this year to try it, um, and I'm not against it. I just maybe if the Flames are doing better, um, I think my attitudes have been killed on everything. I can't wait for fans to be in the building. I can't wait for all this. And maybe that will spark my excitement level and my drive to uh, to finish this final 15. It's kind of a bit of grind. I want normal. But I guess a lot of us have been saying that for over a year now, right? I don't know. I'm not alone in that one. I think uh, I think a lot of Flames fans want an 82-game season back and, and want to flush the toilet on this season. But albeit we're talking hockey, we're talking hockey, we're talking Flames hockey, and we got to roll on with the show. And we're going to talk first about Saturday night's Battle of Alberta and a big Flames win. Then it'll be time to talk about the NHL trade deadline. We'll talk about what the expectations were for the Flames, what moves the Flames did make, and then we'll discuss what lies ahead for the Flames. Who will be on the roster next year? Who won't? What will happen with the core? And what role will Sutter be playing in building this new team? Then we'll roll on into some Flames news, news from the north, a Facebook poll, grading for living's deadline day, and we'll wrap with a rundown of this week's Flames games. It's all on another episode of Flames Unfiltered. All right, Flames fans, let's recap Saturday night's Battle of Alberta. And I want to talk about this one because the Flames actually won. 5 nothing was the final. 0-0 after 1, 4 to nothing after 2. One more in the third to make it 5. Monaghan had his eighth to start the game off at the 312 mark of the second. Ended up being the game winner. Gaudreau added one, his 14th of the year from Hannafin and Backland. Lindholm followed with a power play of the year from Gaudreau and Giordano. Giordano capped it off in the second period, making it 4 to nothing at the 1925 mark with his seventh on the year. Brett Ritchie added one with uh, the midway point of the third to make it 5 nothing. Second of the year, assist from Valamaki and Sam Bennett, his final point of the flame. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. A big win for the Flames. They outshoot the Oilers 32-17 and let Mike Smith have it just a little bit. It was good to see. A little scare with a minor injury to Matthew Kachuk, but we'll see how that goal goes. Team practice earlier today. Flames, though, just two wins in their last 10 games. Postponements along the way. A jumbled mess of schedule. And I don't know. 15 more to go, Flames fans. All right, let's talk any deadline. And that happened today. And you know what? Most of us, let's talk expectations first. 
my expectation for the league was it to be an all-time low in moves. Um, I never really saw what the final number was. It was a fairly quiet day. I actually had time for a nap today, which is something I usually don't get time for on trade line day. Um, but there was some moves, and there was some substantial moves. We'll talk some of them in the North later on in the show. But as a whole, for the Flames, what did we expect? Well, we thought maybe David Riddick would be on the list of players that could go. We thought maybe Derek Ryan would be on the list of players that could go. A uh, Joachim Nordstrom and Sam Bennett. But we didn't know for sure where we stood with Sam Bennett. We had heard he maybe had rescinded his trade request. Um, so we were really up in the air. I, I honestly, I didn't think Sam Bennett would get moved. Some Flames fans, what I saw on the internet or on Twitter, were expecting a little higher returns. And I didn't. I expected actually a little lower returns. Pleasant surprise, maybe. I expect a core shift. But when will we get that core shift? I was hoping it would start today, but didn't figure it would. Because of the cap, you know, cap in, cap out, I don't know how money in, money out, you're going to make that work. I don't know. I just didn't figure. I figured it was going to be more likely to be a summer project. Um, will it happen? I don't know. I thought it might happen a little bit more to last year. Was we went out and got Mark Santana. I thought maybe a good or Monahan might go. That did not happen this summer. Probably, I guess you'd say it probably has to happen. Because if it doesn't, where do we go with True Living then? We can't come next year with this same core. There's just no way. Something that did happen for the Flames. And last night, April 11th, which would have been Sunday night, it started. As the Calgary Flames sent goaltender David Riddick to Toronto for a 2022 third-round pick, Calgary did retain 50% of David Riddick's salary, which some people were freaking out about that, and I'm like... Wait a second. There's like four weeks left of the season. We need to get something. So we basically bought a draft pick, which I really because everybody was like, well, why are we trading David Riddick? Well, we're trading David Riddick because David Riddick's not re signing here next year. So we might as well get something instead of losing him for nothing. We've got Louis Domingue to back up on the way through the stretch here. This is a move that had to be made. And a lot, I'm a big Save Dave fan. I like David Riddick. But a lot of people were saying, well, well, now he finally gets the chance he deserves. Well, wait a second. He got chances in Calgary. He was handed to the keys of this car before we got Markstrom, and he proved that he couldn't handle it. I'm a big Dave, big Save Dave fan. I think he's a great guy. I think he's a class act. I think he learned some bad habits from Mike Smith, like his emotions, and letting them take over a game. Bad, bad habit. And as soon as that happened, his career started to falter. He had trouble in in situations because he let his emotions get to him. It's like he had to prove to us that he was pissed off because he was playing bad. We could probably see that. We don't need you breaking sticks and throwing temper tantrums. Would I have been happy if we could have resigned Riddick for next year? Yeah. I like the marks from Riddick tandem. I did. But David Riddick thinks he will get a, fir- uh, a shot at a starting position somewhere else. I don't think that'll happen. I sure as hell don't think it'll happen in Toronto. With He'll get crucified in the media there. They've got Anderson, and they've got Campbell, both of which are better than Riddick. I don't know how he sees a whole lot of time down the stretch. Yes, Anderson's injured, and he'll be backing up Campbell, but I I don't think this is an opportunity for him to like find a new home permanently. I don't know. It was back in 2016, Calgary signed him out of the Czech Republic and uh, on a two-way deal, actually, and just... Gave him a shot. And after a half a season in Stockton, you know, he earned his way onto the team, um, filled in for an injury on the All-Star 
team last year, I believe it was. And uh, always had really good starts to the in the second half, it seemed like. And he was going to be an unrestricted free agent. And uh, his agent in Trilliven had talked, and it sounded like he was going to test the waters and, and try to find um, a better outcome elsewhere. So I don't have any problem at all with uh, with the Flames moving on from him. We had to get something. And getting a third-round pick for a goalie that we weren't going to get for the future, that's not too shabby, I don't think. Let's roll on into the second trade. This one happened on deadline day about 20, 30 minutes before deadline. The Calgary Flames acquire Emil Hemenin, which is a forward. He is in the American Hockey League, and we, we acquired his second round or his rights. He was a second round pick last year for the Florida Panthers. We also acquire a second round pick in 2022 for Sam Bennett and a 2022 sixth round pick. So let's get this straight. The Calgary Flames got more of a return for Sam Bennett than the Buffalo Sabres did for Taylor Hall. Let's begin. So in Calgary, we always crucified Sam Bennett because he was the fourth overall pick, a highest Flames draft pick in history. And he didn't pan out to put up first round player production. But we're getting a second, two second rounders for a first round flop. And we'll take our odds on two second rounders. I think that's a great trade. I think that's an amazing return. Now, on the flip side of that, I think Florida does okay on that in the simple fact that this year they're going for it. They're making a strong playoff push. And what better guy to be on that playoff push than Sam Bennett? This guy's money in the playoffs. I hate to see Sam Bennett go. And it bothered me a lot when his agent, Darren Ferris, publicly said early in the year that he wanted out of Calgary. He was healthy scratched here and there and never really put up the production and the points that Flames fans wanted or management wanted. Now, I've stood up for Sam Bennett multiple times because I think Sam Bennett was kind of a fair shot initially in his career. I did not look away Bill Peters and especially Jeff Ward shuffled him in and out first line fourth line fourth line center right wing center third line he never played freaking five games in a row with the same line mates in his career here minus the playoffs last year when shockingly he was the best player now sam bennett maybe he didn't deserve to get more of a chance in calgary because he struggled miserably so this is a two-way street, but I still think Sam Bennett's a good guy. I still think Sam Bennett's a hard worker. I don't ever think he'll be or play up to that first-round status level, I guess you could say. But if Sam Bennett learns his role in his new home, whether it be Florida this year or long-term or somewhere else long-term, I think he will be effective. Maybe moving out of Calgary will not only be a breath of fresh air, but it'll eliminate that first round tag that's been hung on him by the market. They'll forget about that somewhere else. And they'll look at him as Sam Bennett. And maybe he'll produce. Do I ever think he'll be a guy we look back on and go, oh man, that's Martin St. Louis. Look at what he's doing now. No, I don't. I think as a group, we'll look at him and say that Sam Bennett's a serviceable player and he's doing a hell of a good job. And you know what? I hope he does. I hope he does. 
I love the way he performed in the playoffs. And I hope that somehow he would fit in after Daryl Sutter came here, and he did, and probably would have stayed long-term. But you know what? Flames fans, we were going to lose him in the Seattle thing for nothing either way. Now we don't have to fear losing him. It's probably going to end up being a, a huge blessing in disguise. I think Sam Bennett will do fine in Florida. He might have a great playoffs. I like that team. I like that offense. But you know what? I don't see, based off their core group, I don't see him getting you know a ton of uptick in minutes. I could be wrong there, but I just don't see where where that's going to fit in. Sam Bennett was in his final year. He was going to be a restricted free agent at the end of this year on his two-year $5.1 million deal. So was the return on these two trades good or bad? Do we expect more guys to be traded? I didn't. I was actually, I thought maybe the Riddick deal was going to be the only deal and that's what we were going to live with and uh, so be it. But you know what? When I sat back and, and thought about the reality of who we got and, and who we lost and, and what we got in return, I don't see how we can be upset as Flames fans at all. I think the return was, was really, really good. Another deadline day in Calgary in the books. All right, Flames fans, let's talk a little bit about what lies ahead. We talk in the intro a little bit about how these final games, the 15, are going to be tough. When there's no hope of the playoffs and uh, you're grinding down the stretch, it's kind of like, well, <laughs> what happens next? How is this going to go? So let's talk about a few things we need to look for to make these final 15 games palatable and, and what we can look ahead at. First off, we got Daryl Sutter for two more years. So I think that means he's going to be part of this process that Tree Living's going to be doing in bringing in players that will fit into a Sutter system. Now, some people may think that's not a smart way to go. I think it is a smart way to go. Um, I, I think it's I think Sutter systems work, um, but I also think that a lot of people are going to have to go in our core to make a Sutter system work. And let's talk about that core. I do not see Johnny Gaudreau here next year. And yeah, you can call me Eric. A lot of people have because I've been critical of Gaudreau. But if you're going to play hard and you're going to win and you're going to push this team to the next level, we need star players bigger than Gaudreau. What prospects in this organization are ready to make a jump? Well, Connor Zari is coming on the shoots. That'll be maybe a two more years. Emilio Pedersen, maybe two years, hopefully. Jacob Peltier, we'll see. I He's 25 already. I thought maybe we'd be seeing him a little bit this year. Glenn Godden, who we did see a little bit, he's 24 years old. And today we are uh, the Flames announced that uh, they've recalled Adam Raziska from the Heat, and has put him on the taxi squad. He's been a bright spot in in Stockton, and he's going to get his chance. It looks like he's 21 now. He's at about the prime age to to make a mark on defense. I still like Connor Mackey. I think he's a guy that can make a mark. Will we see some of these prospects in the final 15? I think we will. I think we will see Connor Mackey. I think we'll see more of Val Mackey getting more reps. Um, I think we'll see Raziska in the lineup. I hope we do. Um, I think we need to see a little bit more. Seattle expansion looms, and we've solved that problem. Um, with Sam Bennett gone now, we'll uh, be able to protect the guys we wanted to protect and not have to worry about losing him for nothing. 
And so, as crazy as it sounds, that is a blessing. And I hope that uh, this final 15, we get to see what lies ahead, I guess, and uh, some bright spots. I like our defensive core. As we, when you look at it, we've got Hannafin and Rasmussen, Hannafin and Tana, excuse me, for three more years, Rasmussen for five more years, one more year of Giordano, which I know people are screaming bloody murder about, I'm fine with. I think we just need to lessen his load. We've got to figure out a contract for Valimaki and determine what we're going to do with unrestricted free agents Stone and Nestroff. Up on the front end, we got Kachuk for one more year. Good row, which I think will be gone. Monahan for two more years at 6.375. I would originally say, yeah, he'll be gone, but I don't know if anybody will take him at that salary. Backlund we have for three more years. Lucic for two more years. Lindholm for three more years. Ryan at UFA. Majapani, we have one more year. Levo at UFA. Richie UFA and Nordstrom at UFA. Dylan Dubé will be a restricted free agent, so we have to figure out what that transition contract will look like. The final 15 in Calgary will basically be a training camp on where this team goes for next year. I just hope that we see some bright spots in some of the prospects. The prospect pool does worry me. I'm not a huge fan of our prospect pool, and I'm very, very interested to see where that plays out. Inside Edge Hockey News. Dropping the gloves. <clears throat> and stirring the pot. All right, Flames fans, time for a little bit of Flames news. Two signs to quickly talk about. Walker Dewar from NCAA Hockey in the States from Minnesota State Mankato. As they lost out in the Frozen Four Signs with the Calgary Flames on a two-year entry-level deal. He is a right winger. The Flames also signed Ilya Solovanov, a seventh-rounder in 2020, played last season in the KHL where he recorded nine points, two goals, seven assists, in 41 games. He has signed a entry-level deal with the Flames. Some news from in the division. Vancouver's situation is Getting better, they look to resume games on the 16th and will complete a full 52-game schedule, which means they will be playing probably four games a week from here on out. Well, today was deadline deal day, and let's talk about the moves that the North Division will quickly roll through them as the Leafs add Nick Felino and Stefan Nosen in a two-way or three-way con three-way contract. What am I talking about? A three-team deal. Toronto sends a first rounder and a fourth rounder in 21 and 22 to Columbus. And San Jose down the two end up getting a fourth round pick for the transfer of money, and they retain some of Folino's contract complicated deal when all said and done Felino joins the Leafs and that is a huge huge deal another move made these were both made on Sunday as the Boston Bruins acquire Mike Riley from the Ottawa Senators in return the Senators get a third round pick in 2022 the Islanders acquire Braden Colburn from the Ottawa Senators a seventh round pick 2022 everybody's getting picks in 2022 no one dares pick this year because nobody has any idea on who without seeing games it's too scary to get picks this year on deadline deal day edmonton did make one deal bringing in dimitri kulikov from new jersey for a conditional 2022 fourth round pick and one other well there is some more moves vancouver gets matthew highmore from Chicago for Adam Gaudet. San Jose gets Barb- Barbanoff from Toronto for Salomon. Ottawa gets a seventh rounder in 2023 for Eric Branson. 
Toronto adds Ben Hutton for a fifth rounder in 2022. Montreal adds Eric Gustafson, guy that we added last year at this time from Philadelphia for a 2022 seventh round pick. Vancouver adds defenseman Madison Bowie and a fifth round pick for a fourth round pick to Chicago. Winnipeg bolsters their defense a little bit, adding Jordy Ben for a sixth round pick to Vancouver. How do the standings stand? Well, it looks like Calgary has almost lost all hope. Toronto leads the division currently with 59 points. Winnipeg just six back with 53. Edmonton one behind them at 52. And Montreal's got that four spot locked down with 43 points. Calgary back at 37 points. Vancouver 35. Ottawa bringing up the pack at 30. Why do I feel like they won't end at the bottom of the pack? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. Schedule changes of abundance. The Canucks and Flames schedules have changed numerous times this week. The Flames Canucks game schedule for 31st has been changed to April March 31st. It's changed to April 21st. Vancouver at Calgary scheduled for April 10th is now May 3rd. Ottawa at Calgary, which was April 20th, is now May 9th. Calgary at Vancouver, which was May 8th, is now Saturday, May 15th. And Vancouver at Calgary scheduled for May, or excuse me, April 8th is now May 16th. That looked like to be the end of the regular season for the Flames. Boy, I hate, I'm a, I'm a plan guy. I hate schedule changes. It's got everything all messed up. Listener question Facebook poll this week. We took to the Facebook poll and talked to our friends at Flames Hall and Calgary Flames fans. And I posed the question What letter grade would you give Brad Treliving this year for his work done on NHL trade deadline? Well, 311 people responded here this evening. Great response. Again, join Flames Hub and Calgary Flames fans on Facebook to get your fill of hockey talk for Flames. And resoundingly, believe it or not, Flames fans, we are positive today. We are talking positive. 46% of you, 144 respondents, gives Trulivan an A. And I would definitely give him an A. I think the returns he got were very, very good. 33% said B. 13% said C. 3% said D. 4% said F. And the people that said F, I'm sorry, you just don't have a grip on what's going on because he wasn't getting players back. I hope you guys all know that, Flames fan. He wasn't getting players back for those guys. This was all about getting picks. Picks, pick, picks. Get all your Flames Unfiltered podcasts, team news, Team updates and highlights at flamesunfiltered.com. All right, what lies ahead for the Flames this week? Tuesday, they're in Toronto, 5.30 Mountain Time, 5 o'clock Mountain Time, crazy times at Montreal. And then Friday at 4 p.m. Mountain Time in Montreal. I don't like this season. I don't like these game times. I don't like I don't like any of it. Yep, this week is the final grasp of the Flames playoff hopes as they take in Montreal, currently six point back of the Habs. Unfortunately, the Habs have three games in hand, and doubtful would be an understatement, as I think it is almost <laughs> impossible but we'll give it a shot here and we'll see what we can get in the final 15 flames hot mic game of the week where has it gone and is it going to be back yes it will be back where has it gone well i'll tell you the schedule has been jacked whacked and hacked and every time i've had a hot mic game scheduled it's been postponed We're back April 21st, a Wednesday night when the Vancouver Canucks take on the Flames, and you ask, what is a hot mic game of the week? Well, a hot mic game of the week is a watch party. And what we do is we talk Flames hockey, we watch the game together. We complain, we bitch, we cheer, we have a little bit of fun. Some cool things, though. You can enter to win a blasty jersey by guessing who scores first. We also give some hockey card sets away. It's a lot of fun. 
Join us on the next Hot Mike Game of the Week. You can do that April 21st against the hated Vancouver Canucks. Yes, we do hate the Vancouver Canucks, don't we? Well, that's it. Another show of Flames Unfiltered. I hope you had a good time. I hope my mood gets better. I am frustrated with this hockey team. Saturday night was fun, though. It's always fun winning the Battle of Alberta. Deadline day has passed now, and it's the final, final fate of the flame season to turn this week when we take the half twice. It's time to start thinking about the future. What core members will go? Who will stay? What lies ahead for the Calgary Flames fans? Thank you to all of our listeners. We truly appreciate here at Flames Unfiltered. Help us out by following us on social media at Flames Unfiltered. Subscribe on YouTube at Inside Edge Hockey News. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. That moves us up the charts. Makes me happy. Makes me smile as much as a Calgary Flames goal does. We'll see you next week, Flames fans. Enjoy this week's action. There's some damn good games going on in the league this week. And should be a lot, a lot of fun. Flames got the Leafs, got the Habs. Should be good. See you next week, Flames fans. Get connected. Flames Unfiltered can be found on Twitter, at Flame Unfiltered. And also make sure you check out our Facebook page, at Flames Unfiltered. Check out host Brad Brood on Twitter, at Brad Brood. And if you like what you hear, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. You can find Flames Unfiltered on all the major podcast players. And consider subscribing to the Inside Edge Hockey News on Patreon. That'll get you exclusive content and much more. Thanks again and enjoy the hockey action. Play on! Thanks for tuning in to Flames Unfiltered. Check back for more action-packed Calgary Flames talk. This has been a production of Inside Edge Hockey News Radio, copyrighted and distributed by the Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.